In this video, we're going to focus on the logical operators that are provided by JavaScript to assist us in programming logic as we are developing our programs. Now, these three operators I find we use all the time in complex logic and even in basic logic that we use in a daily on a daily basis in our programming. So let's begin with the logical AND. Now it sounds complex, it might look a little weird to you, but once you get the hang of it, it's really a useful operator in our programming. And the reason why it's so useful is it allows us to check conditions against each other, and if one or the other condition does or does not, or they both meet the requirements, we get back a Boolean expression that tells us whether or not we've accomplished our goal. In other words, if our combination of true or false expressions equate out to be what we're expecting. Okay, so that sounded super complicated. So let's just dive in and let's work through some examples of how to use these logical operators and then hopefully the craziness that I just spoke about will make a little more sense to you. Now, what I was saying was is that these logical operators are really good when we have two Boolean expressions or two Boolean values and we want to see if a condition is met when it comes to those Boolean expressions or Boolean values. So what does that mean? Well, let's break it down. Right here, let result equal and now we're going to test something. And in a logical operator, specifically the AND logical operator, we are checking to see if two Boolean expressions or two Boolean values are true. And if they are both true, then the test is passed, we get a true back, and then we can do whatever it is in our program that we want to do and we only want to do that if both of the booleans or both of the boolean expressions equate to true together. So example right here, we've got the result. And just to show how it works really quick, and then we'll get into a more in-depth example. If we say true and true, what we should get back if we do our console log and we log out our result, what we should see down here in the console is true. So let's break this down really quick. The logical AND operator, it takes a Boolean value or expression on either side of it. And when JavaScript goes to execute this operator. It takes the operands on either side of it and it compares them to make sure that both of them equate to true. If they both equate to true, then the result of the operation will be true. Now, in any other situation, if either side of the operation, so if either operand is not equal to true, then you get a false, which means in every other situation, you are going to get a false in the AND logical operation. So let's test that out. Result equals, and now let's put false on the left-hand side of the operation and true on the right hand side of the operation. Let's run it. As expected, we got a false because this and this both don't equate to true. One is false, one is true. Since they are both not true, or sorry, since they both together don't equate to true, then we get a false. Now let's do the exact same thing down here. Result equals true on the left hand side and false on the right hand side console.log and we get a false. So to summarize 
when using the logical AND operator, the operands on either side of the operator both have to equate to true for the result of the operation to be true. If either side is false, the operation will always result in a false. And that is because we use the logical AND anytime we want two conditions in our program to be true before we do something special or something specific. In other words, two conditions have to be met and both of those conditions have to be true in order for us to execute a particular function or to follow a path of logic that requires both to be true. So let's use an example that makes a little more sense now that we know how the logical AND works. So let, and let's, let's say that in our program we are checking to see if both a person wants to swim and they have a swimming suit. If those two cases get met, then the person can go swimming. If either of them are not met, they obviously cannot go swimming because either they don't want to, and so why have a party pooper? And then number two, they don't have a swimming suit. Well, we don't want everybody to see that. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So let wants to swim and then let has swimming suit. All right. At this point in time, both of those variables hold undefined. We learned about that when we talked about assignment and variables. So right now there's no value. So at some point in our program, as we're executing, we make a call to a web service or we ask the user in a web form whether or not they want to swim and whether or not they have a swimming suit. And we get those answers back. And so at some point further on in the execution of our program, we get results to that. So wants to swim equals true and then has swimming suit equals true. Uh, let's say they don't have a swimming suit, but they want to. Now later on in our program, when we're trying to determine if they can swim, we're going to have some kind of a logical check to make sure that both conditions are met satisfactorily before we allow them to get into the swimming pool. So later on in our code, we would probably run into a situation where we are making a check to see if we allow them to swim, okay? And in that check, we're gonna check to make sure that both conditions are true before we allow them to swim. So we're gonna say if wants to swim, oh look, I said swim, not swim. Wants to swim. All right, wants to swim and has a swimming suit. Then we allow them to swim. Otherwise, no swim for you. All right, now we can check to see what our results are by just doing a console.log to check our logic really quick. Off to swim you go. And then down here, we can do console.log, say, no way, you don't have what it takes. And we can say, IE desire and slash or a swimming suit. Gotta have those. All right. Now, if we execute our code right now, we see that wants to swim is true, has a swimming suit is false. And because of that, when we do the logical and check in this conditional, what we find is, is that we check it. So the first side, so the first operand on the left-hand side is checked. So wants to swim, 
it's true. Oh, all right, so that one's true. So now the operator goes and checks the other side or the other operand and says, has a swimming suit? Well, it's false. So one of those operate operands equated to false and therefore both of them are not true. Therefore the condition, this full condition, has not been met. Therefore they cannot go swimming and we end up with the result, no way, you don't have what it takes. Now, if we have true, so they have both the desire to swim and a swimming suit, and we run the code, oh, look, they get to go swimming. And that is because this operand is true, this operand is true, and the and operator requires that both of them are true in order for it to execute the code based on that condition. So now they get to swim. Now, if we go ahead and set the first operand to false and we run that code, again, no, nope, they're not allowed because both conditions have to equate to true. And when this checks those two conditions, if they are both true, then you get to do that. If either of them are false, then you don't get to do it. All right, so hopefully that helps with the logical AND operator. Now the logical operator, very similar to the AND operator in functionality, the real difference is, is that instead of requiring both operands to equate to true, only one of the two operands has to equate to true. So let's go ahead and come up with an example. Let's say that we're all trying to go to Comic-Con and there's really two requirements to go, and if you fit one or the other, then you're good to go to Comic-Con. So let has costume, and let is on panel as expert. All right, and then again, later on in our program, we obtain that data probably from a web form or a web service and has costume ends up being true and is on panel is equal to false. Now the difference is, is that in the AND operator we would have expected this to equate to a false because one of the expressions is false and one is true and they both have to be true. In an OR, that is not the case. Only one has to equate to true. So we can say has costume OR is on panel as expert. And if they are, then we can go ahead and do a console.log welcome to Comic Gone. Oops, all right, else console.log, you are not cool enough. All right, now when we execute this code, here, let's go ahead and remove Go ahead and comment out that code so that it's not interfering. And now we can do the checks. Let's run our code. Now we can see that at least one of the operands in the operation is equating to true, and we only require one too. So in this case, has costume equates to true. Now, because it's true, Really, we don't have to check this other one. So a short circuit happens. And by short circuit, what that does is it stops JavaScript from checking the second condition. It kind of makes things a tiny, tiny bit faster because we're not checking both conditions to see if they're true. As long as one is true, we can execute this code. So it's one or the other or both will be successful, which means we'll get a true. And as long as one is true, it'll short circuit on that one if it's the first one. If it's not the first one, then it'll check both of them. And if the second one is true, then it'll go ahead and do it. So hopefully that makes sense. Short circuiting just means that 
if the first one is true because this requires only one of them to be true or both of them to be true, so one or the other or both, we're good if just the first one is true. No need to do the rest of it. So here we can see that. We'll change this one to false and false. We'll rerun that code. Not cool enough. We'll change this one to true. Run it and welcome to Comic-Con. All right. So one or the other or both has to be true for the logical or operator to return a true. Now the logical not operator, the logical not, all it does really, and if you can remember this, you'll find places where you can use this that aren't contrived in your programming. A lot of times it's when you have a condition that might be true, but you really only want to deal with the faults. And so you use a logical not. And I'll give you an example right now. So all the not operator really does is if we just console.log and we do a really simple example. If I say true and then we execute that code, you'll see I get true. If I put a not in front of true and I execute it, I will get a false. In other words, all the not operator does is it takes a Boolean expression and whatever the current Boolean value is of that variable or expression, it will just flip it to the opposite. So here we have a true, I'm changing it to a false, and here we've got ourselves a false, and I'm gonna go ahead and convert it to a true. Now, that might seem kind of pointless right now, but where this comes in handy is if statements always operate off of the true boolean expression or value and then the false is always in the else so here false stuff um, false stuff gets executed here true stuff gets executed now that's probably poor phrasing but anyways when the condition evaluates to true, you get what is in the if statement. If the condition evaluates to false, you're going to get what is in here. So if we want to, if we really want to see this, then let's just do a console.log and let's wrap that as a string. And let's do the same thing here. Console.log. Let's wrap this in a string. All right, and if we execute this, because it's equating to true, we're gonna get here, true stuff gets executed. If we switch this to false, then we're gonna get here, false stuff gets executed. Now, where the not operator comes in handy is in order to execute stuff in the false condition, I would have to have an if and then an else. Well, what if I really don't care about the true condition? Like, what if that means nothing to me in my code? And really, I only want to do something if it's false. Otherwise, I don't even want to mess with it. This is where a not operator comes in, comes in pretty handy. So, if I, I want to only focus on the false condition, what I can do is I can use an if statement and let's give ourselves a variable let some condition equal true now if I run some condition in here and we run that code we're gonna get here true stuff gets executed and that is because if when this condition executes to true, we execute this code. And we have no else condition, so we have nothing to execute if there's a bad condition. So if we do this, false, and now we execute, we got nothing. Nothing gets executed because this code gets bypassed because this did not equate to true. But if I want this to be 
Let's rephrase this. Handle the false condition. So if I want to handle the false condition only and not the true, so handle false condition, ignore the true condition. But an if statement only executes when this is true, but I want to handle only the false without creating an else statement. What I can do is I can use a logical not. I just go ahead and prefix my variable name that's holding my Boolean condition or Boolean value. And I put a not on front of it. And now with an if statement that usually only executes when this is true, I can handle a false condition only using a true condition statement by reversing the results or the Boolean that is held inside of this. So now, instead of needing to have an if and an else and then leaving the if empty in order to get to the else for the false condition, I can now use an F, catch the false condition by making it true by using the not operator to reverse the Boolean value. And now, in my code, I can handle false conditions and do something special if it's false, rather than only doing if it, only handling it if it's true. I hope that makes sense for you. We already talked about the short circuiting in the and logical, or the logical and and the logical or. If the first one operates, or sorry, let's go through this really quick. For the and, if either side of the logical AND expression evaluates to a false, it returns false. Remember, both sides have to equate to true for it to be true. And then if either side of the logical OR expression evaluates to true, it returns true. And of course, it just needs to check that first one in the logical OR. And if it is true, it just short circuits and goes right into executing because it's one or the other or both. I hope that helps with the logical operators.